Hi everyone, in this screencast I'm going to show you one of Storyline's variables known as the true-false variable and give you an example of how you could use a true-false variable in your projects. So I've got this little demo course set up here where I have three levels or topics, whatever you'd like to call them, and my level 2 and level 3 buttons are not working, but I can access my level 1. So I can go in and I can complete that level or topic, and now my level 2 button is working and I can go through and now my level 3 button is working and when I finish the last topic or the last level then I get a message to tell me that I've finished the course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can go in and set that up. So here's a, uh, a starter uh, example of the same sort of thing where I've got a menu page and then I've got my three levels, three topics set up and I've set up the triggers that will jump me to the different topics when I click each of the buttons and also when I'm on the last slide of every topic that it'll take me back to that main menu page. So starting with the menu, what I have at the moment is I've just created three buttons and what I'd like to do in this particular course is initially I don't want levels two and three to be active okay so that we're going to want to restrict it um, so that they have to complete maybe the course in a particular sequence. So the first thing I want to do is, with my level 2 button, if I can click on level 2 and go to the states area, I want to set the initial state as, yes, disabled. Uh, this means that the button initially won't be working. Now, the problem with that is, if I pop my um, states panel out, is that the disabled button looks, looks exactly the same as the normal button. And for some people, they could think that there's something wrong with the course, because even though it won't be working, the uh, the fact that it looks the same, they could think that there's a problem. So if ever I'm select, uh, changing a button sorry, to disabled, I also like to make it look a little bit different, so it's obvious that maybe that's why it's not working, that it looks different. So what I'm going to do is, for this button, I'm going to edit the states, and then I'm going to make sure my disabled state is selected, go to the format tab, and in this case I'll just change it to red. So because um, we're starting with the disabled state, uh, it will look red uh, on the slide and then I can say done editing states. Then I can also make sure the same thing is done for my level 3 button so I'll change it to initially to be disabled and then I'll edit the state of disabled and make it red as well and say done and then I'm finished. So that's our, our buttons and our structure. Now the way it is at the moment those two buttons will stay in that particular state until we add a trigger to change the state of them to normal. But in this particular case we only want the state of say level 2 to become normal when level 1 is completed. And the way we're going to do that is, is by using true-false variables. Now compared to the other two variable types text and number they can be any value, any piece of any text value or any number value but true-false can only be either true or false which makes it quite powerful. And when we use true-false variables uh, in our courses, we need to do essentially three things. We need to create the variables in our course, we need to change them from one value to the other at some point, and then we need to use that information or the fact that it's changed from one to the other to make something else happen. So in this particular case, I'm actually going to need three true-false variables, one for every topic, so that when level 1 or topic 1 is completed, I can use that information to make level 2 active, then level 2 completes, make level 3 active, and then when they're all complete, show that completion message. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Manage Project Variables tab over here in the Trigger panel, over on the right, and open that up, and I'm actually going to add some variables, my three new variables, by clicking the plus symbol. So the first one I'm just going to call level 1 done. You can call them whatever you like, but it's going to be a true-false, and I like to start my true-false variables in false and change them to true, but you can do true and change them to false. It's just a good idea to keep it consistent. So I'm going to say then OK to that, and I'm going to repeat that process for my other levels. Level 2 done, true-false, started as false, and finally level 3 done, true false, initial value of false. So those variables will sit in the background of our project 
in the false uh, as false until we change them to true at some point. So we haven't yet used them in the course. Now another I guess difference with true false variables is often uh, they are just used in a course where uh, the user does something and the action of doing something changes them from one to the other. So in our particular course what we need to do is we need to change those variables from false to true at some point and the place where I would do that would be on the last slide of every topic so that the person gets to topic one the variable is false it's still false and then we'll change it to true at, at the end of the topic so I can actually add the triggers here from story view if I select this last slide and if I add a new trigger I can say that I want to adjust a variable and the variable I want to adjust is my level one done variable because I'm in level one and then I want to make it equal assignment or equal a value of it's already false of true when the timeline starts on that particular slide now some people would say shouldn't you do it when the timeline ends on that last slide and you can the, the risk of doing that though is that if the user can jump ahead or jump back to the main menu before the timeline ends then the variable won't have changed from false to true so I always just do it from the start of the slide um, but remember you can do it when the timeline ends and then I'll say OK to that so our variable at this point the action of them just getting to the slide is going to in the background change that variable from false and make it true so I'm going to do the same for the last slide in each of my other topics equal level 2 to true when the timeline starts of, of that particular slide and then finally adjust variable level 3 done and make it equal a value of true when the timeline starts on that last slide so now we've done three, two of those three things we've created the variable we've changed them from one to the other at some point now the third thing is we need to use that information to make other things happen so what I'm going to do is go back to the main menu slide now and what I have is my two level two and three are locked so we want to add some triggers that's going to make them active and it's really just a change of state trigger that I want to change the state of both of those buttons from false uh, from disabled to normal when the person has completed the previous level so on this main menu slide I go to my trigger panel and my action is going to be change the state of my level 2 button to normal and I just do it when the timeline starts and the reason for that is we're actually going to add a condition to this trigger so even though the timeline will have started when they first are on this slide the condition will prevent it from actually working until they uh, have finished the level 1 topic so I'm going to add a condition and my condition is going to be that the variable level one done has to equal a value of true and remember it'll become true the, val the variable will become true when they get to the last slide of that topic so I can say okay so we're going to change the state of the level two button to normal when the level one topic has been completed or when that variable changes and then say okay then I'm going to add another trigger, one for my change the state of my level 3 button to normal when the timeline starts. And we're going to add another condition that the variable level 2 done this time has to be equal to a value of true, meaning they've completed that second topic. And then OK. So if we do a quick preview of the entire project, we can test that out and just make sure that that's working, that everything will be locked and we'll unlock when we want it. So level two and three are locked. I'll go through level one. Level two unlocks. Now level three unlocks. Now I go back to the main menu and, and the, 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 the module's completed. I can also add a message now that sh tells the person that the, um, that the module's completed. And what I've done um, just before is I've added a layer here, a congratulations layer to tell people that they've finished the course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a show layer trigger onto this um, slide. So it's going to be show layer, our congrats layer, again when the timeline starts. But we're again going to add some conditions using that variable information. So my condition this time is going to be show the layer if level one 
the level 1 done variable is equal to true. But it's not just the level 1, remember it's all three. So we've got to add another condition to say and the level 2 variable has to be equal to true. And one more that the level 3 variable also has to be equal to true. So that layer is only going to show once all those variables have changed from false to true or once the topics have been completed. So I can say OK to that. And if we preview out this project, we can see all of that working. So level 1 completed, level 2 is active, level 3 is active, and there we have our message that we've finished the course. So there you have it. That's one way of using true-false variables in a course to restrict part of the navigation. Um, hopefully that was helpful and I will see you next time.